uh, well, you had a great Friday evening and uh, having a good Saturday. The weather in London is pretty beautiful at the moment, so uh, I'm going to try and get outside as soon as I get this video done. Um, hopefully all my American peeps have a good Saturday as well. I know they'll be waking up shortly. Uh, it was a really good week of trading for us in uh, Invest Beyond. We managed to secure 523 pips on the week. Uh, we did incur one stop loss and then two trades, which we got out of um, for a small loss. And then uh, I think it was three... Uh, three or four break evens, and the rest, uh, the rest were some great trades. So I was really happy about the week. Uh, it translated into about ten percent close profit, and then uh, I currently have two point six floating profit as well. So uh, fantastic week overall. You know, I do post the results with in, in pips and all that stuff, um, but at the end of the day, it's the percentage on your P and L that really matters. So although pips uh, are relevant to an extent, we have to remember that they are not really the end all of uh, your results. Um, the one easy way to think about that is if you if you translate a scalping method to a swing method where, for example, if you're risking 1% at 100 pips, you, screw up, you secure 100 pips, you know you're only getting 1% of that trade. Whereas if you say you have 20 pips stop loss, uh, 1% uh, and you get 100 pips, you're going to get 5% on that trade, you know. Um, so it's always better to kind of think about it like that, in my opinion. It's, it's a more realistic way to think about your trading. Um, you know, you don't count your profit in pips, you count it in percentage, right? So always make sure that you kind of do that and, and i do always preach about risk management and it will always be like key to trading uh it's definitely the most most important aspect because poor money management is the only reason why people will blow an account i said it in a recent post you know with one percent when you're risking one percent it's going to take a hundred bad trades to blow your account you're risking 2.5 percent it's going to take 40 bad trades to blow your account uh, and if you're if you're getting 100 to 40 straight bad trades, then I'm sorry, but the, realistically, guys, you're gonna need to put your head down and get back on the books and learn how to trade. Uh, get on a demo, you know, take the stress away from yourself and just go that way because 100 to 40 straight losses, you you're gonna struggle in this market. Yeah, that's quite clear. So um, always educate on yourself from risk management. One of the ways I like to look about it is if I'm entering a trade, I always enter at 1% risk. Should the trade start to be moving in my way, then I may tap on another 1% to keep it at 2%. Um, obviously, my capital is quite a lot bigger, but at the same time, you know, a lot of people come into this game with $300, $400, $300, uh, $400 accounts and their expectations are blown, you know, because they, they want to flip their account and they're they going to use extremely high risk on that and then they end up blowing their account. So the truth of the matter is that nobody wants to digest is the fact that trading is a capital game as well. You know, you can blow, you can, of course, flip accounts, but you, if, you're, if you're comfortable with the risk of doing that, then for sure do it. But um, it's up to your own personal risk appetite, really. Uh, like I said, I advocate 1 to 2.5 max per trade. Uh, you get away cheeky with 5% if you're willing to risk that 5%, essentially. Um, but yeah, great week. Pretty excited about it. Again, another great week following on from last week where we secured a, a, a monstrous amount of uh, monstrous amount of profit. And, uh, you know, again, it followed on this week. So hopefully we continue on to next week. Uh, but just want to look over these trades that we took over the week. I did film a video last week, uh, last night, but I missed two of the trades. I uploaded it. I was a bit of a, I was pretty tired after the week, to be honest. It was a long week. So I uploaded it to the wrong, wrong YouTube, everything. It was a bloody mess. Um, so I'm just going to redo this for you guys. Um, so looking at the week, uh, we're just going to start with AJ. It was one of our losses in the week, but it's the first chart open. So we may as well highlight it. Uh, so now why we took this trade quite clearly obviously if we're looking at a daily level here uh we can see that you know aj is still very much above this resist uh the support area here um it was acting as support for quite it was acting as support here um we were expecting it to find resistance no nope, broke out and again like i've always been saying we're retesting this level here right uh still along these daily trend lines as well so don't expect aj just to kind of fall through the roof here just because uh, everyone's trying to sell it all the time. Uh, we could very easily find some support here and form a double bottom um, and then continue on to the upside here to retest these highs. Uh, we could still look to get a touch on this trend line up here as well. Um, so I could still potentially be looking to buy AJ. Uh, we got a lot of risk off media push right now with COVID 2.0 locking everyone up again. Uh, you take it with a pinch of salt, I'd say. Uh, we can see that how the financial markets have recovered from the initial COVID crisis. You know, all to be honest, it looks like a bit of a scam. Um, you can see the S&P or the Nasdaq. Everything's pretty much lost, re regained all of its year's losses. So 
I, I don't understand how that's possible. Nothing's open yet. You, know, you may be trading on hope. You may be trading on optimism. But reality is you, you're not trading on data that's providing anything more than the fact that stuff is still really bad, but it's just not as bad. Um, so, you know, multiple traders who I speak to are all flabbergasted by it, to be honest. It's it's crazy to see how equities and everything, are, 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 you know, they're still like coming towards highs almost again, you know. Um, so... Uh, but yeah, so keep in mind, AUD recently has been extremely reliable. Well, it's been extremely correlated mostly to the S&P. Uh, so that's been the, the main driving force when you're looking at AUD. So whenever you're looking at the two, look to see if stocks are rallying. If stocks are rallying, then you sure as hell do not want to be selling any sort of risk off correlated currencies like AJ. Um, but yeah, that was the trade there. We basically tried to buy this breakout initially of this sort of descending trend line. Uh, we bought on the 50 fib here, had a little bit, and then we closed here. It just wasn't looking good, to be honest. Closed the break even. Um, we entered here, actually. So we entered the first buy here. We came up. We got some profit. We came back. I didn't like it. Um, got back out of that. And then I entered again here, uh, and then I closed out down here for about 50 pip loss uh, instead of the 92 pip stop loss there. So we took about a 0.5% uh, loss on that. So wasn't the end of the days, uh, just trying it out. Obviously, we may be looking for some more bullish price action along the support line, um, but really that's 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 that trade. We'll move on from that. Um, Aussie, New Zealand, we're still in this bad boy, so I was just looking at a potential inverse head and shoulders here. Uh, we are still holding a little bit of profit on this. We have seen the buyers kind of kicked in in this area, which I highlighted prior to this shoulder being formed. Um, it was a 62 fib of this uh, leg here. You can see we found some resistance here when it tested these highs again, uh, but that does look like it's forming a nice neckline. And one of the reasons why I chose to take this trade and, and make a prediction that it would be uh, inverse head and shoulders purely just because from a technical standpoint, which I'll draw here, you know, we can see the top of this head to this neckline. Um, you know, it's about 142 pips, 103 pips, 143 pips roughly. Um, now, when you look at a measured objective of an head and shoulders breakout if we move that over there uh we can see that this breakout the the measured objective is hitting our full swing of this move here of this right shoulder forming here so that move is formed by the negative one extension of this fibonacci retracement here um, you can see if we pull that down so even if we pull it down here um so you know this could potentially be setting up for reversal here to test highs again um, one thing when you're looking to take profit on this, these Fibonacci retracements are set up for a reason. Uh, you can see that we have this 50 fib coming from this high to this low. Uh, we have this 50 fib retracement that's sort of lining up with this level of uh, support and resistance here. So ideally, you want to take some profits here. Um, again, 90 pips. Uh, and like I was saying, when you're looking at risk to reward, although the 90 pips is now you know here, you know we've still got a solid. 2.3 risk to reward on that. So we're still going to come out of that should we break this neckline at least with 1% to 2% on the trade. Um, so if it comes all the way up here, you know, happy days. That's 5% on the trade. Uh, so I'm going to hold this one into next week just to see how these shoulders hold. Should we see a break of this 62 level here, uh, then, you know, the stops are there for a reason. That will completely invalidate my idea. Um, and, you know, that's how we've got to think about stop losses as well. We always got to place them in the range where should it be hit, your initial idea is invalid. Uh, so it's often past lows or highs where if it breaks out on either side, then you know you're wrong. Um, and it's best to just cut the trade at that rather than just hope for the hope for a swing or turn around on it. That's just my sort of preferred method on it. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with that trade. Still holding it into new week, um, new week. We had some GDP contraction on New Zealand, which caused uh, some initial buying pressure here. And I think that will follow through. Should we have any risk off, I think New Zealand would kind of take the hit a little bit harder than the Aussie. Uh, but we'll see. Only thing is, we just got to keep in mind that we did close below this resistance level here, which has acted as support, uh, support, support, resistance, resistance. Uh, so we'll be careful with that. But like I said, as long as these fibs hold, the 50 to the 62 fib holds, I'm happy with this trade. Uh, so, yeah, holding that one over the weekend. AU, bit of a frustrating trade. Uh, we got in it and then we moved our stop losses to break even purely because, you know, we entered here um, on this bearish candle here. We had a great Asian session, came down to about roughly 60 pips. 
uh, I woke up and it was here and, you know, I had this sort of four hour bullish candle form here. So I was like, oh shit, you know, this is going to break out of this trend line structure here. It's not going to hold. Um, so I moved my stops to break even. Unfortunately, I got taken out uh, pretty spot on there and it just continues to drop. But regardless, you know, I would have closed out here as well. Should we have seen this trend line break here? I mean, it's quite hard price action to read on the Aussie realistically, because if we're looking at that, you know, straight away, that would have been, oh, you know what, breakout, close. Um, and then we had this huge reversal candle coming down here to close the last four out the last eight hours of the day. Um, and it's closed back beneath this uh, descending trend line here. So should it break, should it break lows here? We're definitely going to be looking for a, a, a retest of this level of support now, which is our 66894 figure, um, which leads back to this level here. Um, so you can see it's quite a heavy level of support here for the pair. Uh, so I'm thinking we're going to come down for a retest on that and then possible continuation up to retest these highs again, potentially. Uh, hopefully we can maybe get into that next week. Let's see how it goes. Um, not really anything we can do about it now. It's in a bit of the middle of nowhere. So I'm not going to enter something in the middle of nowhere, unfortunately. Uh, Cad Swissy, we're still in this one. It's just still a, it's still possible, you know, I'm holding hope that we could see some downside on the back of CAD uh, weakness. We saw some of the strength coming off uh, the oil rally get faded towards the end of Friday, which was nice to see. Um, you know, we had some disastrous retail sales for Canada and that was, I was expecting it to go quite bearish after that, but oil kind of held it up for a little bit. Um, we always have to keep into consideration the data was probably predicted in the sense that they knew the shutdown, the lockdown was happening. They knew that the data was going to be crap. So they kind of factored the price into uh, these things uh, quite a lot. Um, so hopefully we see some more continuation there on CAD Swissy. Uh, I'd like to get at least 100 pips out of this just purely so then I can get my two to, my two uh, risk to reward on that and come out with, I've only got 1% on this one. Uh, so I'm hoping to come out with that 2%. Obviously you get the swing down here to retest these support levels, but I'll look to take majority of my profits at the hundred at the hundred level. Why do I do that? Quite simply because a, the majority of my trades are set up in a way that hundred pips um, is equal to at least a two return on my risk. Uh, I don't like to go for tip for tat on a lot of one to ones just because then you're you're basically battling against stats. Um, you're going to have to have more winners than losers, and unfortunately, in this market, it's not always. Uh, you know, you can't, it, you can't predict that. So I think it's always better that you, you let the winners run for at least a two because then at least, and at least then you're covering two losing trades. You know, if this was to, for, for instance, hit, take profit, you know, I've got four trades buffer here on any 1% trade. So this is basically, can, I could have three stop losses um, for 1%, be down 3%. And then this, this one trade, you know, could bring me back up to 1% positive on the week. Or 1% positive wherever my PL is. Uh, and you know, that's the important reason why it's best not to cut trades 20, 40, 50. You know, it, it can be it can be hard um, judging the market, but money management is another skill and skill set in its own, and it's something that you really only gen, uh, develop over time. Uh, I get a lot of people asking about money management, you know, and the best thing I can say when trading is trading is literally a game of preserving capital. Uh, it's a long game, you know, you want to manage your money, you want to make sure that. Your risk is set so that you're not, you know, chasing profits or chasing losses. That's how people blow accounts is they revenge trade, essentially. Uh, so just be smart about it and don't rush into it. You know, there's always going to be another opportunity in the market. There's always going to be another trade. Losses are a part of the game. We all have them. Uh, but, you know, these are the trades I'm talking about where if, they, if, they, if you let them run and they, hit, and they hit the target, then they make all the difference at the end of the, with your P&L. Uh, and that's the main thing in my eyes. But anyway, we're still holding this one. We entered on the back of this trend line break here. Uh, we entered on the 50 fib retracement from this high to this low. Not a huge fib retracement, but we can see it's respecting these levels here. Uh, the 79 fib, which is the extreme value on the Fibonacci retracement for me. Uh, you can see when we come in here, you know, we've respected this perfectly here. Uh, we had a huge sort of railway tracks coming on here as a reversal candle. Again, this is this this four hour candle here was when we saw CAD uh, pick up a bit of steam towards the end of the day, and then that move got faded, and we closed back below this fifty 
50 fib. And like I said, if you're looking for a continuation using Fibonacci's, then the 50 fib will act as your sort of equilibrium in my eyes anyway. Um, so if it remains below this and you're looking for a bearish continuation, then that's a good sign. If you're looking for a bullish continuation, vice versa, just, just look for that. Um, these levels up here are really where you're looking to get your optimal trade entries. So I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with ICT. Uh, he, he repackages a lot of support and resistance Fibonacci stuff, but he does a very good job of explaining stuff as well. Um, I use his Fibonacci levels as targets, to be honest with you. They do work quite nicely. Uh, the targets are obviously these negative, uh, negative 0 0.27, negative 0 0.62, and negative 1. Uh, these often, you know, do line up with appropriate targets and you will see that I use them quite a lot throughout my, uh, throughout my setup. So, uh, yeah, so CAD Swissy was still in that one. Didn't show CAD JPY, didn't show your AUD. We took a sell on this. This was quite a nice sell. Um, why we took this sell is quite clear. We have a beautiful trend line structure broken here on the daily level. Um, and then we had this bullish push up here to retest this broken support to see if we could get some sellers in and on the resistance level. Uh, we had that. Uh, we had this little pin bar form here or this bearish candle down here, which is beautiful. And then we entered the following day on the Monday on the pushback to retest that support, uh, retest that resistance, sorry. And we got it. You can see it right here with the trend line structure. We had this nice M formation, almost like a little double top, bouncing beautifully off these now resistance levels. And then we got the continuation to the downside. Uh, so we closed 170 on that. There's potential still... Uh, Keep going. Looks like it may be setting up for another pullback on this support level just to come up and retest up here potentially. Uh, but one thing you'll notice as well, we go on our daily. Now, this is what I'm talking about with the power of fibs, right? Uh, because I can pretty much guarantee I didn't use Fibonacci in this instance. But if I drag my fib from this high here to this low, you can see, I mean, that is your entry right there to the, to the pip, right? Actually, you might do a bit of four hours, let's put on four hours. These Euro, New Zealand Euro AD charts are a mess. There's such extreme price. But you can see here from this high to this low on the daily, uh, that was the breakthrough. So we broke through uh, our support structure here. And now what we're looking for is this high to this low from this broken support level. We're looking for a retest of these Fibonacci level extensions. Now, this is, if you're using FIBS, this is what you want to use a Fibonacci for. It is pure confluence. If you look at these areas here, we have huge levels of uh, what will be resistance for this pair now, purely because of, you know, you can see them here. Trend lines resistance, trend line resistance, daily support and resistance, horizontal level, uh, a 70 fib, 62 fib of this leg here. When you have such a strong confluence of support and resistance in in the direction that you're looking for the pair to go, you know it, it's a pretty fail safe trade. Uh, you can throw Fibonacci's everywhere, and you'll find the market always lines up to some extent. Like let's do this low to this high. Uh, look perfect. Set the 50 fib here on this. Uh, again, it confluences with this resistance line. Could have bought that. See how it comes up here. It retests, it tests this uh, target here. Um, I'm going to do a video on Fibonacci's just to get let you guys know. Retest that, could have taken a few pips there. Um, so Fibonacci's are everywhere, you know, that's why it's such an important aspect to understand. But this is a beautiful example of a four hour, like larger volume Fibonacci move. So what we could expect from EU, if you know, if, if you're holding this still, uh, you know, a realistic target coming onto the back of that could be, should we see any some more risk on? Yeah, that's a beautiful trade. And it's going to, touch down here, break down here, see if it comes. We can see how this, this oh, we can see how this negative two, 0 0.27 uh, target level lines up with this level of daily support and resistance. So again, that's what you're looking for. It's just these confluences on both the entries and also on the targets. Um, this is where the smart money sits. You know, the smart money sits at these levels. Uh, you know, here, you know, they'll probably pick up some buys here, buying at the lows. Uh, but what they're looking to do is you want to always think about when you're placing a trade, you want to get in at the extreme levels of either uh, if you're looking for a sell, you want it at an overpriced value. If you're looking for a buy, you want it at undervalued, uh, undervalued value. Um, 
So that's how these FIB extensions really work. And, and I use FIB, like I said, really make sure if there's a huge confluence of levels here like this and the Fibonacci levels that line up like this, you know, the sellers are waiting here and they're going to jump in on that, as you can see, and they won't give you that much of an effort to get back in there. Um, so beneath this 50 FIB still, like I said, uh, this will act as our sort of equilibrium. Should we get a retest and some more bearish rejection, then I for sure see it testing these lows further down here. Um, but again, like I said, it's all going to depend on this structure here and this trend line structure. Uh, I could break and go back to highs. Uh, we'll see. It's all going to depend on AUD and basically how risk is going into the week. But yeah, 170 pips closed out on that one. Happy with that one. Uh, I think I took 3% on that trade. So um, Euro, Euro USD. Uh, another good trade here. I closed out for 100 pips. I closed out a little bit early, but hey ho, we had this sort of ranging down here, which I didn't like. Uh, so I got out once we retested these lows one more time. Uh, you can see we kind of broke back and we're going to test these Fibonacci levels again. See how these are just lining up and they respect so well. Um, so this Fibonacci level is from this low to this new, uh, sorry, from this high up here to this new low that was pierced here from this low. Sorry, my phone. Um, and that, you know, we sold initially here on the right shoulder. Uh, we had this head and shoulders formation setting up. So we sold on the right shoulder once we had some bearish confirmation. So, you know, EU has been super bullish. Uh, so I didn't want to enter a short just because I thought I saw a head and shoulders. Um, it, a lot of these trades lately have just been blowing through these patterns. Uh, so we waited for this sort of engulfing candle to start forming. And then we entered uh, a level here. But again, using the Fibonacci's, we can see... I use Fibonacci's a lot for head and shoulders patterns purely because if you're looking between the 62 and the 79 extension of the head, uh, the potential head to the sort of neckline, so to say, if you want to call it that, then off, more often than not, your your right shoulder is going to form within these. There's a zone of Fibonacci areas here. You can see here, this level here lines up with these levels here as well. Um, so that's another way that I like to use Fibonacci's to kind of predict pattern so to say uh we tried to get in a second sell here no luck didn't get the pullback i was looking for uh, and it just continued to melt so we closed out this one for 100 down on these lows here so i was quite happy about that again because i think it's like an extra 50 pips at the moment but we can look to enter that again thing is uh dollars just been so floppy recently that it, it's you know you're reading a lot of the big money saying the dollar dollar's dead blah 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 uh, but we'll see we'll see if it rallies into the new week with a bit of covid risk coming in um g didn't trade it gj uh gj so we got 120 pips out of this thankfully and then we got out before we did the massive reversal uh so initially you know we sold this breakout here um took up to here tested these lows here a lot of people are calling this a head and shoulders yeah sure it could be not all head and shoulders look the same this is a bit of a weird looking i don't know I'd like a bigger extension on those shoulders to call it a head and shoulders, but technically it looks like it panned out, right? We had neckline, breakout, retest, and then flop city. Um, so, you know, I, I took out, I got out the buy here on this pullback right when we hit these lows. Um, I think it went to 120 pips. I got like 100, 110 pips on that. And then obviously with BOE, uh, they didn't supply the stimulus that would have given the pound any sort of happiness, uh, and it just melted off. Uh, you know, we close beneath this support level here. Um, so we could see some more continuation down. As you can see, we've broken this huge trend line structure here as well. Uh, so what I'm going to look for, maybe some consolidation around this area and then some rejections from here, or even, you know, it might break down and come up, retest. I'm going to be looking to sell any sort of retest of any of these levels, basically, uh, and then try and get some continuation down. Uh, now, how can we look for that? You know, we'll have to find the pullback essentially. Uh, so we're just waiting for a pullback on that one. See how see how it goes. But yeah, I mean, it looks it looks like shit right now. Obviously, just because I've left the stop open. Um, but yeah, initially it looked like a good trade. But we got 100 pips out of it. Three percent, all good. Happy days. Stop loss wasn't as big. Obviously, uh, we had a 57 stop on that, and I risked slightly higher. You can see it extended down here, but the stops were here. Um, and like I said, took profits up there. Um, GN, uh, this was 
the stop loss of the week flop city absolute nightmare look at this don't know why i bother buying this to be honest with you um all i saw here was i saw a little false well i saw a breakdown of this channel support we came back up and we broke above it again retested it we were retesting this channel as support here uh, there's a bit of daily divergence on the rsi nothing too crazy uh, so i was expecting maybe just a little bit of a bounce but we didn't get the bounce we literally just went these are one of those trades where you either there's three type of trades you can get in you can get one first trade is in boom profit bang 15 minutes take profit happy days uh you know those are the great trades when the momentum's there and you catch the breakouts of any structures or any sort of sort of neutral patterns or uh anything like that um and then there's the the rangy the rangy crap and uh, that's the trades we all hate that's when we get in them and you're in them for four day one let's look at an example of a rangy trade uh and cat look at this mess you entered here you're just like sitting here how long has this been up here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten days ten days of wasted margin sitting in this trade you know uh so that's a horrible trade i've been stuck in a few of them before and you're just literally looking at your mt4 and it's just like but that's a nightmare man and then nine times out of ten they end up getting stopped because they go the wrong way so rangy trades suck and then uh, the third type of trade is this type of trade where it's pretty much the opposite of the first trade. You enter in it and it just goes straight to stop loss. And so that was what this was. This is the nightmare, the crap city trades basically. Um, so didn't enjoy that one, wiped that one off the table. But at least it was the only stop for the whole week. So I was happy about that. Uh, GU, again, we entered here. Again, this is a, another right example of confluence of fibs and support and resistance here uh so we have this four hour trend line structure again coming into play here we came up here this massive bearish engulfing that closed back below this line this level here um you know it was acting as support for the pair here so closing back beneath it was obviously going to now any sort of retest of that area was going to give us a hopeful resistance um but you can see that four hour candle was basically made up of a double top here um, we found no buyers to take this pair higher despite bouncing here. And we had this engulfing candle giving us another information here. Um, now, I entered this trade once we broke this level and we came back for the retest. Um, with the highs to the lows on the fib retracements, we can see that the 50 fib lines up nicely right with my uh, right with the zone here, which would be the acting resistance now. We didn't quite get there. I had a sell limit here. I was monitoring it really closely. Um, but luckily, we managed to get in right on the top of the wick. Um, right on oh, 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 oh. these five minute 15 minute charts crazy i don't know how people trade these we literally got in there uh, perfect trade um you know no no drawdown whatsoever straight into profit and this is tight this is trade one these are what we call trade ones and and then you know i closed it here i closed it for 140 130 pips 120 i'm not sure what it was i think it was there i closed on that fib extension down here the 62 and this is what i mean with targets setting fibs and targets unfortunately it's continued to melt down but you know i wanted to clear profits on that because we were coming up to these huge levels of support where we could see a massive bounce from it quite frankly uh, you know we we had these this level of support here uh, and we also had you know don't take this this channel support here um coming from this sort of channel coming down here uh it's an important channel purely because we can see it's been a key sort of turning point here, here as support and retest resistance meltdown, retest resist, you know, it's held it. Um, so coming into that as a support here, you know, again, bounce. Um, I wanted to take profits on that just purely because, you know, just want to close out and take some profits and this market's still melting down here. Uh, we could probably see GB find some support around this area, I'd say. You know, we could see it come and find some support on that area. I'm going to get a little bit fibby here. Let's draw a fibby here. Where is this, this low to this high? Uh, you can see we've broken through that target. So even here, to be honest, this is where we most likely look for, for GU to find some support. Is this level here? This put a little thin line there. Um, just lining up with these fib levels extreme here from this ball leg 
and obviously the targets coming from this leg here could even test lows here on a full swing move i'm hoping not i'd like to get in on this again um i would like to get back in on the sell i feel a little bit upset that i missed this extension of at least 100 pips there but any sort of retest of this now channel support turn resistance and this 50 fib if we get some sorry we get some bearish rejection off there for sure i'm getting in on a sell uh but yeah good trade happy with that one 140 i don't i can't remember off to my head whatever it was uh ncad we entered along on this we moved for our stop straight to break even as soon as we kind of broke out uh this was just me trying to get in on it we had this sort of descending trend line for me here broke out we, i thought i was like oh shit we broke the range i'm super this is going to break the range 31 pips just moved stop loss and we got taken out of that one um for break even at least that's not too bad um what else did we do what else did we do, do you... no, no, no. let's have a look at the s p this is great i love this how great is this you know this is when you know it's going to be a fun weekend half the time um look how this has closed on friday close right on that structure that trend line structure there that's been supporting the pair um you know when anything like this happens on a friday you know that the weekend we're gonna we could potentially see something that's gonna gap um and more often than not it's gonna be in the environment that we're in at the moment risk off gaps i can imagine being more prominent unless a vaccine comes out over the weekend uh then you know then we could probably see the s p gap here <laughs> Uh, to be completely honest with you, um, but should there be no vaccine and maybe some more cases, then we could get a gap beneath this trend line. I did say that we were going to range between some some of these highs and lows here. Um, we were going to find a bit of a range here purely because I think that we're we are at the end of it um, in terms of like the, the, this COVID. Uh, so we'll have to see. But that that's so interesting. I love when the market does this. Basically, just like sets up to. To either take a whole lot of stops out or just fuck with people's head essentially excuse the language but that's that that's it's yeah it's great some of the manipulation in the market is fantastic i mean look at this like i was saying what is covid right the most you know this huge global pandemic blah 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 you know let's shift all our money and we may lose a little bit sure whatever but when we buy back down here shit man we've basically just made eight year four years of money in three months you know let's look at it on a monthly level this is where it gets interesting right i mean where's 2008 2008 you know that's four years of growth four years of growth basically to reach no sorry 2018 uh, my math there's terrible um the two years of growth to basically reach these levels you know, February here, February here, um, coming into January 2018, uh, two years, January 20, smashed it down two months. They, they probably sold all that shit, made a bunch of money selling it, and then they bought the bloody, bloody thing down here again and made just as much profit as they made in two years in three months, basically. So, you know, massive scam. Uh, and that's my eyes, to be honest with you, because I don't understand it nothing's open you know everyone's scared to like touch anyone i'm, I'm meeting friends and i'm giving them bloody elbow bumps and can't get in an uber without a bloody mask yeah it's just crazy man uh now you've obviously got this you know i checked my phone this morning and i've got this covid tracking thing that's been installed on there without me even knowing if you want to check your uh google accounts you should do that um it's very interesting if you're using android uh it's under your settings and then you go to Google settings and you'll see COVID-19 exposure notifications. If you're on Apple, uh, go to your settings and then go to health and you'll see the same thing if you've got the updates. Uh, but anyway, that's just the way I see the S&P. It's just been a massive sell the news and then, you know, just fucking buy it. Uh, so hogwash in my eyes. Uh, UCAD, so UCAD's going great. Uh, we've got these buys holding from here and the buys again here. Quite a clear structure forming here this looks like a bear trap coming down out of this channel now um so you know we found channel support here uh we broke through it as a resistance level we're retesting it as support we found some support coming here again on this level here uh looking at the daily you know with this level here on these highs here we found support uh so realistically I, i've got this target set 
I drew this little eclipse thing here because the way I see it, it's going to retest this. You know, this is a great confluence here. Again, markets like to hit confluences of areas. Uh, we have the confluence of these lows here lining up with this descending trend line. So we for sure could hit that as a target, which lines up nicely with our um, 350 on that bottom position. And then yeah, try and get that. Shit there. And then uh, 156 on that. So again, that's going to be, that would be 3% on the small trade and 3% on the the bottom trade so it's like a six percent trade there fantastic and that's using one percent risk guys this is the thing you know a lot of my trades four hour daily they're going to be a longer 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 span of holding these trades but it's a lot less stressful man like i'd rather play cod or you know set trades up send trades out and then like chill and not have to i do look at my phone all the time don't get me wrong but i'd rather not be going in and out in and out closing in and out you know that drives me nuts man and half the time is i end up losing money because you know you it's natural emotions when you see things go red. Um, you set in these tiny stops and you can't predict these spikes. Intraday noise is so big. You know, it's better to just set your stops past uh, H4 highs, H4 lows, uh, and then try and ride the trend in whichever direction you believe it's going to go. Um, but that's going to look good. I like this trade. I'm pretty happy with that. I think it's going to definitely, hopefully, tap that. Uh, we saw this. We saw CAD kind of strengthen up again, but then, like I said, totally faded the move. Buyers kicked back in on this fib retracement. Um, which is actually the 50 fib of this leg to this high. Buyers kept in. Then we're retesting highs here, but I think if we break these highs, then we're going to break these highs and we're good to go for here. Uh, so, yeah, I'm happy with you, Cad. Um, what else did we trade? What else did we trade? UJ, I got out of this for 20 pips. I think it's still a valid trade, to be completely honest with you, holding the, uh, the 106.8 level. Uh, I think it could definitely still get a little bit of bullish momentum should we get some risk on. Uh, UJ has got a lot of, it's obviously often used as a, bar a barometer for risk. However, a bit of a tricky day nowadays because both USD and JPY are safe haven currencies. So uh, even if we do see some risk on or risk off, uh, the dollar still does remain quite strong against JPY, which is why uh, if we see a massive sell-off in stocks, it doesn't necessarily, I don't necessarily believe that UJ will dump as well. I think the dollar is holding its value now as, as that sort of world reserve currency and safe haven. And that's what we've been seeing a lot of. There's a lot of USD strength once COVID hits the roof. Um, so next week will be interesting. We'll see how many more uh, places have had this these spikes in cases. Um, what else did we trade? What else did we trade? You're a can. Are you doing no, no, no. Silver. Um, Got out of this trade at break even. I liked it technically. It was a great trade um, purely because it fitted everything that I had um, in terms of my confirmations. Uh, and quite clearly, my, I need three confirmations on the trade, and that's usually a structure break, I.E., a trend line break, a new lower low, a new higher low. Um, and then obviously, I needed to line up with the level of strong daily or um, mostly daily, to be honest, mostly daily levels or, or four-hour volume levels, and then also lining up with a Fibonacci retracement of these extreme values. Um, that's the three confirmations I want. Uh, that's all the three confirmations I need, to be honest with you. Um, and Silver gave me that trend line structure break here, um, retesting this daily resistance level here. Bounce, bounce, bear, bear, bear. Um, we could still see some downside on this, but... Uh, I closed out break even just to wait a little bit. Uh, the initial trade, oh, the initial trade we took was obviously on the 50 retracement here, uh, on that, and then we had that. Um, you know, so it's about 40 pip stop loss, and then we had our support there again, 2.5 percent return. I would have liked that. Unfortunately, we didn't get it. Um, however, I do think the trade is still technically valid. So until we break these. This level here and we break above this trend line if we say for example break above here and then we find some support here lights out then the trade's gone um but let's see how we go next week because we have broken this uh this low here to form this new low here so as long as this high holds here along any of these values we can see bearish moves down to push to make a new low uh but that's that's basically it guys i think that's all the trades we took let me just check my phone because i did this last night and i bloody left out two of the trades so oh cat jpy we did trade that. that's right uh again same same setup as uh, gj to be honest with you it was just a short-term buy that we took for 100 pips um just trading 
trading this breakout of this structure here on the hourly, it's a bit more clear why we took it. So we had a little bit of a flag formation coming here, saw the bullish uh, candles forming here along these fib retracements from this low to this high. Uh, we were challenging this trend line structure here. Uh, we entered and we got the pips up to about here. We closed out here again because obviously we retested these highs. This didn't hold as our support on top of these highs. So I capped it there, took the trade out. Um, and as you can see, that's fine. It's kind of dropped back down. So uh, it wouldn't make sense to be holding buyers on JPY and then selling CAD Swissy. So CAD Swissy came towards the end of the week. And these trades were all sent out on the Monday, Tuesday, just when we had a little bit of risk rally. Uh, but really, that's about it, guys. Hopefully, you know, you guys have learned something from this. If you have any questions, like I said, feel free to fire them away my way. Uh, we're going to have another great week next week. I can feel it coming. And, uh, you know, let's kill it, guys. It's two great weeks so far. I'm really looking forward to the next one. Peace.